Hello, my name is Max Crampton Thomas, and I'm the regional editor for the South Region of Capital Analytics. In today's episode, we'll be hearing from some of the top real estate and development leaders in the Nashville area. This conversation comes to us from the Invest Nashville 2022-2023 launch conference. This was the panel one discussion titled Cranes in the Sky, how Nashville's growth has fueled a real estate boom and how that's changing development. Today's discussion was moderated by Mr. Marshall Crawford, President and CEO of the Housing Fund, and the panelists included Mr. Sean Buck, Senior Vice President for J.E. Dunn, Mark Deutschman, Founder of the City Living Group, and John Vardaman, Business Unit Leader of DPR Construction. Don't forget to leave your thoughts in the comments below, and I hope you enjoy the video. Good morning. Come on now, we're in the South. Y'all know how this happens. I'm not a preacher, but y'all know how it works. Good morning. There you go, there you go. Well, good morning to all of you and thank you for being here and taking time out of your busy schedules to be with us. Thank Shane and Invest Nashville for having us this morning and bringing us all together for the first time in person. I mean, we did it last year um, virtually. And so now it's good to have the opportunity to see all of you in person. Um, robust, these jokers are rock stars. Forget about the robust. Um, we're going to just share a little bit with you about what's happening in Nashville. Um, my name is Marshall Crawford, President and CEO of the Housing Fund. The Housing Fund is a private nonprofit community development financial institution supported by so many of you in this room. We thank you for your investing in the Housing Fund and believing in the work that that we're doing throughout Tennessee, not just in Nashville, but throughout Tennessee. Uh, we've been around for 20, going on 27 years. Why? Because in 1996, there was an affordable housing crisis in Nashville. 1996, an affordable housing crisis. And today, here we are 27 years later, we're still dealing with an affordable housing crisis. But that crisis is even more, robust because of all the work that you're doing and everything that is happening um, with this great city. And so what I'd like to do is introduce you to three rock stars here that have had a significant impact on the growth of this city and let them talk a little bit about some of the work that they're doing. And then I have some very pointed questions because if you give me a microphone, I will go on and on and on and on. The, break, the beat don't stop until the break of dawn. Y'all know how that all goes, right? So the thing is, is that I have some questions here that I'm gonna ask and direct um, collectively and then individually so that we can talk a little bit about it. So let's start off with the, the gentleman who I think many of you know, from the work that he has done, Mark Dushman, who is um, founder of so many, but CEO of only one. <laughs> and so let's have him um, talk a little bit about who he is, his organizations, and then we'll kick off some other questions with our other three panelists as well. So my name is Mark Deutschman, and I founded Village Real Estate Services back in 1996, back when we only had five units that were owned in the Central Business District. We were a hollow shell of what we were today. So it is interesting that you talk about the need for affordable housing even back then. I have a company called the City Living Group and we do multifamily residential. We sell developments for lots of different groups, both downtown and in and around Nashville. And then I have core development services. So we're also developers, mostly of multifamily residential. We've done work, for instance, in Wedgwood and some other locations where we're doing mixed use projects. So Thank you, Mark. I appreciate that. John Verdeman, um, another incredible rock star in the city, doing some great work. We've come to this city and really having an impact there. Why don't you share a little bit about who you are and your company and what you're doing? Yeah, I appreciate it, Marshall. Uh, you've also mixed up, we got rock, rap, hip hop, all, all the references are all in there already. So we're definitely the music city. Absolutely. Uh, so John Vardaman, I'm with DPR Construction. Uh, we've been building things here for about 10 years or so. I run our local office here with a lot of help from some of the folks sitting over there at our table. Uh, our motto is we exist to build great things. And that's of course great projects, but also great relationships and great communities. Uh, and that's why I'm so glad to be invited to be here on this panel today to really talk about a little bit of that. Uh, to build those relationships and just to talk a little bit about the community we live in and all love. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, John. And Sean Buck, another rock star for us. And yes, we are in Music City. 
And um, JE Dunn has done a lot of great work, um, many projects in this city. Why don't you talk a little bit about yourself and your company as well? Thank you. Um, following that, and Sean Henry's a little hard, so bear with me. Um, so my name's Sean Buck. I'm Senior Vice President JE Dunn. We, um, I've got the honor of representing uh, about 250 employees in our um, throughout the Middle Tennessee area, and uh, just a wonderful team. It, I moved to Nashville in 1998, and I've had a, a privilege to uh, see this city grow and be part of that growth and to do some really, really incredible things with a lot of people in this room, which I'm remarkably grateful for. So excited to be here and, and thank you for the opportunity. Good. Well, gentlemen, thank you. So let's let's talk about what's happening and let's start off by setting the stage talking about the economy and where the economy is now. You know, there's labor shortages, there's supply chain issues, and then there's this thing called interest rates and how they're affecting the work that you do and the work that many of us in this room do as well. So, so share with me a little bit of how these factors are actually impacting the real estate and the construction market. And then what do you see as potential opportunities that we should be focusing on? So who would like to start off and take that on? Yeah, I guess I'll take that one. Um, so our, our world has gotten harder, right? There's no doubt about that. Ed, deals are harder to pull together than they have been. But good real estate survives economic cycles, and you know we've um, we've seen that. And Nashville's been remarkably resilient. I mean, I and when I compare, we've got 24 offices across the country. And as I look at other markets, it's amazing what we've seen happen here. Real estate in you know, this city is still open for business. It is harder. Supply chains made that difficult. Interest rates have made that. A, a lot of things have made that. But you know we've we've seen activity continue here. We've started a high profile hotel and a fully spec office building within the last 90 days in this market. So, you know, I think for us, those opportunities lie in sound fundamentals, good real estate. Uh, they also, you know, surround themselves with businesses where their you know, economics continue to thrive. Healthcare, you know, we mentioned earlier, industrial manufacturing, some of those spaces. So I, we think the market's still very bright. Uh, a lot ahead, a lot of good things ahead for us. I would just say, uh, I was reading the other day, uh, a wise person said, we're sort of things can be growing and contracting at the same time. And I think that's, you know, Sean talked about it, it is a difficult market. That's a little bit of what makes it difficult is that I think if it was just completely booming, we know what to do. If it's a recession, I think most of the business leaders here, you, you kind of know what to do and you hunker down. We're in a, a little bit of this where it's it's a little bit of both at the same time. No one's really sure what's happening. And so you really do have to look harder at what those opportunities are, where the financing's coming from. Um, and from a construction standpoint, uh, it, it can it can take longer to get the things in your project than it actually does to take to build the project. I mean, we've seen lead times for certain uh, certain things in the supply chain. They're 30 months uh, and we can build your building in 24 months. And so that's really going to impact how you might approach the early stages of a project. Uh, and so having the right people on the team and, and sort of that for, forward looking planning, I think, is even more important now uh, than it was when things were just all booming. So we do a lot of multifamily residential, we do sales, we do development. So when we started some of the projects we're selling currently, the interest rates were three and a half percent. We had to sell those projects in advance to de-risk the project. Well, now it's two years later and we've been hampered by supply chain issues. We don't have transformers to get the electric to the projects. The city officials are busy, so it's hard to get inspections. And now the buyers are waiting to close and the interest rates crept over 5%, 6%. 7%. And now they're having to close. They really want to close because the prices have gone up, but it's very difficult. And it makes it exasperates the affordable housing issue that you've talked about. Absolutely. Absolutely. And all of you talk on good, make good points that talk about the issues of what the economy and the challenges of the economy, but growth is not stopping here in Nashville but we're having growing pains as we continue to do that. So what does smart growth look like? How do, we, how do we do this in a more consistent and collaborative way? So talk a little bit about that. And then if, in addition to that, what factors are influencing your decisions about how to ensure that the growth is smart? When, when you and I served on an affordability and transportation task force a few years back, and we talked about you know, smart growth on the transit stops. And we've talked about 
sort of greenways and trail-oriented development. We were working on the Charlotte corridor, but it speaks to all the quarters in Nashville. We were, we've been building for a car-centric society for 50 to 70 years. And now what we need to do is really connect the dots in the urban core. We need to connect people to places with greenways, with smart bikeways, and make it easy for people to get their kids to schools, to get to jobs, to get to the church, get to anywhere without necessarily having to jump in the car. So we need to make, it's almost a, an ingredient for affordable living. You let people move without a car and they'll save some money. I would also add, you talked a little bit about, you know, what do we look for in opportunities and, and how do we make smart growth happen? Uh, to me, the biggest thing is, is labor availability. Um, we're continu continuing to see supply chain improvements, uh, but I, I stay awake at night worrying about where we're gonna get all the people to build these buildings uh, and, and not just to build the buildings, to work in all the businesses we have here. I think uh, I'd, I'd be sort of um, living in a dream world if I thought that I wasn't competing with a lot of the people in this room for the same labor force. I think that's just the world we live in now. And so setting up good transportation systems, including folks beyond just the natural core and all of Middle Tennessee and how we sort of raise the, uh, the level of all the communities here so that people are in, continuing to move in to the area so that we can keep driving our businesses forward with available labor. Yeah, there's, there's no doubt about growing pains, right? Um, the, the downside, however, growing pains are better than, you know, the other problem, which is not growing, right? So we're blessed that we're in a city that has some of those challenges, but we do have to focus on, we've got to get smarter. Um, you know, candidly, we've got some big checks to write in this city right now from an infrastructure standpoint, you know, from a physical infrastructure, electric roads, water, et cetera, things that can make development continue and plan for development in the future. And we've also got some real social infrastructure expenses coming, you know, affordable housing we mentioned, but education, healthcare, how do we take care of this workforce that we're working really hard to build and keep it? Um, so, you know what, the, the good news is, is Nashville made a lot of investments ahead of this, you know, boom, we're living in now. The trick is we've got to make those investments so we see that in the future. And I, I think we're poised to do that, but uh, there's a lot of work to be done. Mm -hmm. Well, all three of you mentioned the element of affordability and the influx of individuals moving into the city and then the labor shortages and where all these people um, are coming from and how they're going to be able to live in a city that is growing as fast as Nashville is growing. Do you see this influx of individuals that are moving here? Do you see your projects? Are you looking at your projects differently? Is the nature of your projects changing on what you're focusing on and how you're focusing on it. And Mark, you did touch on that a little bit from when we did serve on the Affordable Housing Task Force years ago, um, some of the way that we were looking at the city, but do you see now your current projects being different than what they were years ago or maybe even a couple months ago? Yeah, when I was chair of the Urban Land Institute back in 2019, we hosted the spring meeting and we had 4,300 of the top developers and financiers come to our city and have a look. And we got named the number one three emerging trend city at the time. Well, it's sort of a natural phenomena that now we're number one two years in a row. So that has caused a huge influx of people. And first of all, this last few years, we've been seeing huge numbers of people come from New York City, from Chicago, from LA, from Silicon Valley. And they all have been coming from markets that are more expensive. And so that drove up the prices considerably. So how are we adapting to it? Well, some, you know, for now we're looking at places like Hip Madison. You know, we bought the Memorial Hospital, but we're trying to work with your pilot programs and some of the things, some of the tools that you bring to the table to see if we can create both attainable and affordable housing. But it's a challenge. It is a challenge. Do you see the nature of your projects changing and yeah, we do. I mean, I you know, one, we're seeing they're they're larger, they're more complex. I mean, everybody in this room has had some involvement in that. These deals are harder to put together and they're bigger, they're they're more dense. So that has definitely been a trend we've seen. We've also seen a real flight to quality. As we you have, to have real estate that differentiates itself from you know from your peers. So if we're seeing the the not only the size and scale of projects growing, we're also seeing the cost, but the, and the quality standard that you know your customers expect increasing as well. I think that's good for the city overall, but it is definitely changing the landscape. We're going to see more density, and we're going to see higher end product here. At the same time, we're trying to compete for how do people live here. So um, you're going to have some competing forces there. 
Yeah, I would say I had one thing. I think Sean said it very well. It's in, in to sort of build on what Mark said. Success really just keeps raising. If you have a high profile and you have great success like we've had, it just keeps raising the standard. And so I, I think we just have to get comfortable with that and know that it's going to keep continuing. Uh, the other quick number I throw out is I was reading that, uh, you know, we're talking about competing for the same labor. It is getting more expensive to build because we're having to, to raise wages across the board uh, to do that. So it's a little bit of a cyclical effect, but the, the starting average wage is around $36 an hour construction, which is now $3 more an hour than starting average uh, for a college graduate that just graduated. And so that's that's having another impact on construction cost here as well. You know, it's interesting, you know, Middle Tennessee serves as the anchor for so many other local cities around the um, around the city. So sprawl is a major conversation and the impact that, you know, individuals can't afford to live in Nashville. So they're looking at Clarksville and we heard about the new stadium being built in Clarksville or they're looking at Columbia, Tennessee or they're looking at other nearby cities. How do you, how do we address that? What do we say to these other municipalities and local governments about the impact that Nashville is having on their cities? One, I think just, let's all pause for a minute. That's, a, that's great that we're even asking that question. I can remember being at similar events in the past and the question was, you know, this is great for Nashville, but what about all the outlying areas? And I think it's really wonderful that now we're saying, hey, all these other places are booming too. Uh, and that was sort of the, the thinking back then was that, look, if, if Nashville is going to do well, it's going to distribute out to the other cities. And I think that's a little bit of what we're seeing now. And so, again, that's a good thing overall. I do think those other cities, uh, much like Nashville, has reached out and, and done studies and, and learning opportunities for how do you look at what other uh, communities have been through. Uh, I think the more that our sort of surrounding communities are doing that. I know uh, Williamson County just hosted an event. Uh, where they went and looked at some of the outlying areas in Phoenix, and we're trying to understand, you know, some of their lessons learned. Uh, I think there's a lot to be said for doing that for all of our outlying communities so that we're sort of uh, learning from, from people who have been there before. It has been a lot of fun, you know, being part of the growth in Nashville from, from again, when it was a, sh a shell of what it is today. But you can look around some other regions that also need to think about their core. And we've been down in Chattanooga for the last few days, and Chattanooga has done a good job setting the stage for almost 50 years. You know, they cleaned up the city. They came and had the fortitude and the philanthropic support to come in and build their park systems in the urban core. They retained and maintained their historic fabric. And they've got a lot of gaps that still need to happen. You can go down and look at that city and go, wow, they have the Chattanooga way. They've got some really good things. They've built out an urban greenway system. Now you could see you know, being in the path of Nashville and Atlanta, that they're ripe for a resurgence. So you can see the impact of a Nashville sort of spreading across the state. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think growth and prosperity don't come by accident, right? They come with planning, they come with intentionality. I, I look at, and we've got some great examples of that in outlying outer areas, you know, what happened in you know, Franklin as they built themselves as a suburban, you know, office core or you know what is going on in Clarksville right now those are investments that were made 30 40 years prior to prepare themselves for the you know growth and prosperity that's come uh, so I think we've seen some great examples of that there's still some areas in and around Nashville where that needs to happen um, but I think it should be viewed to John's point that's a positive thing as long as you're intentional about it you know and you know we see like you know we're fortunate to be working in Clarksville currently see what happens to wages for employees in that in that area you know see what happens to housing as they continue to grow but you know their planning over multiple years is what led to that and you know it's remarkably impressive i think we've got a lot more of that to do well thank you so now let me let's get very specific about what you do as individuals and some of the comments that you have shared in particular John, you were interviewed for Invest, and you're going to be in the magazine when you pick it up today. But you made some very pointed um, comments about efficiency and what the new normal looks like. You talked about shorter budgets. You talked about constraint timelines. You talked about um, the general desire of people wanting their projects done a whole lot faster. In your perspective, share a little bit more about where the avenues of greater efficiencies lie for the work that you do and how others should be approaching. Yeah. 
And, and I should say, too, I don't think it's all a bad thing. We should be pushing the envelope. We should want to do, uh, you know, what is more value for the money? How can we deliver it faster and better? Uh, Sean said there is this tremendous, you know, sort of flight to quality or is, is our, we raise our profile. People just expect more uh, from the real estate that they're moving into or working in. Uh, for me, that really revolves around, uh, you know, planning people and also I'd say prefabrication to get really in the weeds. Uh, I was reading the other day, 80, sorry, 90% of all projects in a recent survey had experienced a delay uh, of some sort from their original timeline. 80% of those they attributed to an owner delay. Uh, there's probably a little bit of, uh, of skewing there because they're probably talking to a bunch of general contractors and it's never our fault. Um, but, but I do think that there's something there in the numbers where people are starting and, it, and there's a focus on starting fast rather than finishing fast. And that, that's where that planning piece really comes in, where I think on projects now, you've really got to bring a lot of people to the table. And that's where having the right people involved early on, because you don't want to get halfway through a project and realize you need, oh, I need one more consultant or, oh, I, I've got to go engage this other uh, department within the city or the county that I never even knew or thought to think about. Uh, you've really got to vet that out early and often. Uh, to, to get that in place as soon as possible. And then when I say prefabrication, I know people sort of roll their eyes and everybody thinks of, you know, the Ikea furniture you bought when you guys just got out of college, but it, it is really about limiting the manpower on site if you want an efficient, well-run construction project. That just, that, that issue is not going to get better. Uh, it just, that's the reality we have to face. Absolutely. And you make good points. And Sean, you're shaking your head. Absolutely. Yeah. And Y'all are doing projects from multifamily to um, billion dollar EV plants, yeah. industrial sites, all of those things. And we talk about prefabricating or trying to get things done in a more efficient way. Speak to um, when you, the element of the construction landscape, and when you look at it, what industries are driving some of the things that, that you're focusing on and how you're working on those things? I mean, I think you can look at a lot of the growth in Nashville and where the strongest industries are. They feed our business. I, we're not, candidly, we're not that smart, right? We, we follow where the business takes us. So I think, you know, healthcare has been the fabric of this community for a long time. That's been a big piece of our book of business. You know, on the, on the private development side, it's, we're really seeing it come from well-heeled sponsors with good real estate you know, and sound business practices, you know, so those you're, you're having to gravitate towards those, those deals that were a little bit more fringe aren't happening. So, but those quality ones still are. Um, and then I think it comes down to, you know, the, you know, Nashville's economy is remarkably more robust than it was even in, you know, 2008, right? You know, this was a healthcare and music and that was it, right? Well, that's not the case now. You've got the tech sector, which has got some bumps currently, but you've got industrial manufacturing. You've got, you know, you mentioned our, our deal in Clarksville on the EV side. You know, I think I saw a quote from Stuart McWhorter and said, hey, we're on the first quarter. I'm not even sure we kicked the ball off there yet. I mean, I those type of growth environments and the things we're seeing that's where our business goes and and if you know john and i and our, our competitors are good at what we do we're going to follow it um but the nice part is it's coming from a lot of different places and you know so if you have a, a tech you know downturn for a window of time you can survive it and you know so we're we've been intentional about our diversity of work but luckily we're in a market where we can do that well since we're in the preds arena i think you might drop the puck instead of <laughs> kick the ball but, um, you know, good points, good points there. So, Mark, you know, you're known, everybody knows you as a community builder, and you've been building this community for a very long time. And you touched on this earlier, but I'd like for you to give us some more insight about how we, how we can do things in a very innovative way with the influx of people that are moving here. Again, affordability is a challenge. And people are looking at and wanting things from a very different perspective. And so talk a little bit about how you're approaching that and how you're handling. Well, while we've been in a pandemic, we've been building the greenway system that you and I talked about that will come from Centennial Park and now come down to the um, to the farmer's market. So that's going to kick off this year. You're going to see construction on that project. We've also been thinking about where the old uh, sound stadium used to be. It's sort of a 68 acre park that could happen for a community that's there. Well, that's now out for master plan. And you're gonna see, I think, some funding in this next capital budget that will create a world-class urban park that will serve our community. 
Um, I'm also now thinking about, I'm in the chair of business outreach for the mayor's office of sustainability. And we're looking at some other things right now. We're looking at our carbon footprint. We, we need, we're a city now that's pledged to reduce our carbon by 50% by 2030, 80% by 2050. And we really have to step it up. You know, when you look at everything happening on a global level and we're working with a business cohort, there's 14 large businesses, Bridgestone, Nissan, et cetera, that are all looking at their own sustainability plans and looking to see how we can influence, you know, the robust entrepreneurial businesses that are in our region to do the same, to make sure that we're being responsible stewards of our city and the planet. Absolutely. Well, thank you. So we set the stage by talking uh, about issues that are being impacted by the economy. Then we talked about what you're currently doing and how the environment currently is being um, driven by growth. So let's look at a little bit about the future and what you see about the future. So do you see the emergence of a different Nashville? It kind of stunned us all into silence with that when we all want to make predictions, right? And everybody's, uh, this is being recorded, I think, on YouTube. Uh, I, I don't know that it's a different Nashville. I mean, I think certainly, look, Nashville is, is going to continue to evolve and change. Absolutely. Um, I think the fundamentals of what uh, attracted me personally to Nashville, brought many of our businesses is here, were this ability to, you know, someone someone will always take your first meeting. Someone, you know, Sean said, if you've been here a week, you've already realized that it's not a bunch of different communities, it's one community. And so I think sort of that spirit uh, is still alive and well. I do think as just Nashville grows and gets to be bigger, that we've really got to sort of codify that into uh, more uh, maybe formal or official ways. I know that, you know, right now uh, we're participating in uh, the mayor and the uh, uh, NDOT set up a multi multimodal access closure advisory committee, which is quite the mouthful, but it's really about how do we, how do we get uh, more uh, clear guidelines and, and make the, the lane closures and everything that's necessary for construction of all types, whether it's high rises or greenways, how do we make sure that's really benefiting not just the people that are building, but it's really taken into account all the stakeholders in the room. And so I think those types of uh, organizations where you have uh, builders, developers, the fire department, the engineers, everybody has a seat at the table and can really not only discuss the problem, but then give people that are trying to build and trying to actually get things done a forum to see what they have to do to accomplish their projects. That's what's gonna be needed to continue to drive this forward. Sean. Yeah, it, it's definitely going to change, right? But it can change. Uh, we've seen it change in our time here. Uh, it continues to get better. And I think it's the, it's organiz it's people like this in the room. It's people like we're grateful enough to work for and with that keep Nashville special. Um, and I, I don't think, you know, growth doesn't mean we have to lose that. And I, I don't think this city's poised for that. I hope not. Uh, there's a lot of good things about Nashville, but we actually have a brand. You, Music City is a good brand. And when I was chair, again, of the Urban Land Institute, I was traveling around the company, country and everybody was so envious of the brand. They're like, how do we do that as a city? It's like, well, it's not easy, but, but we should keep it for one. And then secondly, I said, if you ever get a chance to have a TV show that bears the name of your city, take it. <laughs> Good point. So final thoughts here, and let's tie all this together. Um, you know, there's this song that I think Stevie Wonder wrote called There's a Ribbon in the Sky for Your Love. Well, branding. Wow. Keep, it, keep going. That was awesome. <laughs> Fun. So for branding, there's cranes in the sky for our city. And so with the cranes all in the sky, you know, what are your thoughts around that? What does that mean to you when you see all of these cranes in the sky? I wish a couple of more were ours uh, is the first reaction to that. Um, I, you know, for us, that means that this city's thriving. It's growing. Uh, it's it's going to continue to grow and be better. And, um, you know, that comes with a lot of excitement. And I think it comes with a big responsibility, too. But um, we're fortunate that we're in a market that has, you know, that kind of stuff going on. For me, I would say, uh, you know, cranes in the sky means things are changing. Uh, and it's really, you know, there's this proportional mix, too. If you have cranes in the sky, there's a there's 10 times as many other projects going on. And that really just means things are changing. Uh, it's nothing to uh, to fear, certainly nothing to be worried about, but it is something to jump in and participate. There's change. There's growth. There's a lot of opportunity. I know the folks in this room feel that way. That's why you're showing up here this morning. So it's how do we all jump in and really influence that in a positive way? 
it makes me realize that we need to do more small scale development and that one mile radius walkable livable communities keep a look at your own community and what you can do to do good work right at home and like look at the corridors that are emerging that used to be car centric come in and start populating small pieces of it, it doesn't have to be cranes in the skies it can be small things to create livability walkability great communities and i have a book one mile radius in the back if anybody would like a copy please <laughs> and it's a wonderful book and i thank you for the free copy as well <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, didn't I tell you we have rock stars here? Let's give a round of applause for our rock stars. And I, Shane is coming. Just sing to us a little bit while Let's we're waiting. To you, man, believe me, I know I'm gonna get ridiculed by my staff here later for the singing, but um, they're going. We're gonna take a pictures. Thank you. Thank you.